You know, I know the school season started a couple of months ago, but I feel like the sports season is in completely full swing right now. Man. We got obviously some meaningful football games, but the Boy State soccer team in action. Yep. The ba men and women's basketball teams were in action. And then out in Caldwell, plenty of entertainment. Absolutely. Oh, this is the best time of the year. I think so. It, it's right up there. I mean, so much going on night in, night out. Mm -hmm. We got hockey season as well. Our Minnesota Wild are kind of struggling They're right struggling. now. struggling. You know who's not, though? The Idaho Steelheads. They are not. They've gotten off to a great start. They have. They How have. about the Boise State football team, yeah. though, looking to move to 8-1 and one on the season? And last night, they were at home for just the second time in 50 days. Brett Rippon back in the house along with Reese Odiambo. No Hank Bachmeyer last night. Chase Cord making his second career start. Nice first drive from Cord in the offense. Gain of 26 here to Khalil Shakir. Good things happen when two gets his hands on the ball. Cord then caps off this 12 play, 92 yard, seven minute drive with this TD pass to Achillean Butler. The Broncos go on top seven zip. After some back and forth punts, Wyoming gets on the board here. Tyler Vanderwall on the keeper, and we are knotted up at seven apiece. We move to late in the second quarter with the Cowboys threatening, threatening to score once again before halftime. Curtis Weaver says no thank you. Sack number one of the night happens here. You wouldn't have to wait very long for sack number two. The next play. Very next play, Weaver again. Just a little bit of a speed rush around the tackle. He now is 12 and a half for the season, 33 for his career. That limits Wyoming to a field goal. Cowboys up 10-7 at the break. All right, on to the second half we go. Cord with a nice pass to John Hightower. The gain of 43 puts Boise State in business. Cord, by the way, finished 19 of 30 for 190 yards. That would lead to this Eric Sachs field goal, and we are all tied at 10 apiece. Not his biggest field goal of the evening. More on that in a moment, because after a stop, Boise State's next drive, and uh-oh, George Halani fumbles, and guess what? Wyoming recovers. They capitalize on the T.O. Four plays later, Xavion Valade with the 21-yard rushing score. Broncos down 17-10. Heading to the four. Could the Broncos have yet another fourth quarter comeback in them? Well, the answer to that, yes, at least momentarily. Khalil Shakir had seven catches for 70 yards. He also had this five yard rushing touchdown. We're tied at 17 and headed to OT. As JT alluded to, that field goal, this was the most important one from Eric Sachs. It's good, so the Broncos have a three-point lead. Wyoming's turn. And Cooper Roth is a very good kicker, but here, he comes up empty, wide right and a little short as well. Boise State wins in overtime. Survive in advance, 2017 the final. Lots to work on moving forward. Not pretty in a lot of areas. Know that from just how the game went before we even get to the film, but at the end of it, we've practiced overtime, we've talked about overtime, we get a chance to be in overtime, and we win the game. I didn't watch when they snapped the ball. Uh, I was kind of looking the other way, and then I turned last second, I seen the ball go a little uh, wide right or whatever it was, but man, it was just, my heart kind of stopped for a little bit. It looked just off. I don't know if we got a piece of it. I'll have to go back and look, but man, that last play <laughs> was, was crazy. Just to see that and to see my team celebrating, uh, it's just the moments I'm gonna cherish, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not gonna forget moments like that. I'm, I'm really confident in our team that we're gonna get the job done, so, um, just going out there and to see, the, to see the defense do what they do and the offense executing what we do, um, it's just a team effort. As a coach and as a fan, you'll look at all the things that should have happened. As a player, you're out there just scratching and clawing and the win is the most important thing. This game was about our team finding a way, coming together. I'd say we did just enough. And they did just enough to, to improve to 8-1 on the season, and despite that close victory over Wyoming, Boise State still moves up a couple of spots in the rankings. Broncos now up to number 19 in the AP poll. We'll have to wait for the college football playoff rankings for another couple days. Down to the wire, mm -hmm. survive in advance at this stage in the season, month of November, yep. a lot on the line, Mountain Division matchup. That was a big win. Mm -hmm. That was a big win for Boise State. Um, it was, because... Three-point wins are better than three-point losses. Yes. Right? Simply put. Absolutely. We'll have more on this in just a little bit when Tom Scott joins us on the set. But in the meantime, we toss it over to him for tonight's edition of the Scott Slant. And I know, Tom, that sometimes the traditional ground game has uh, been stagnant, but Boise State has found production elsewhere. 
Well, yeah, it's it's kind of a mixed bag, uh, but there's a lot of consternation about the Boise yeah. State running game as it pertains to the running backs. I started putting this together, expecting to find something not so pretty, comparing rushing from the Broncos wide receivers to the running backs since the beginning of October. Over the last five games, the wideouts have been strong, averaging 10.6 yards per carry and scoring four touchdowns. But the running backs have been serviceable, even considering last night's struggles, averaging just under five yards per carry with ATDs. After further review, I say, do not give up on the run this season. It was about this time last year that Riley Wimpy's season ended with a torn ACL. This year, Wimpy is hitting full stride. Consider the three defensive plays that led to Boise State's victory last night. Wimpy was the guy who stuffed Xavier Valade for a one-yard loss on fourth and one at the Bronco 39 with 31 seconds left. On the first play of Wyoming's overtime possession, Wimpy stayed with his assignment on a flea flicker and broke up a pass in the end zone. And on third and four, he stuffed Valade again for a two-yard loss forcing a field goal that was just a little bit too far out. 12 tackles, two for loss, and two pass breakups. On we go to Western Siding Trivia and throw away your paintbrush. Name the three Fruitland High graduates to start for Boise State this decade. This Saturday night is senior night, and that's why I ask you this. this that should uh, give you one of them right off the bat. I'll give you all three after break number one, and back to Jay and Will. Thanks a lot, Tom. We appreciate it. Should we answer it? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Are you kidding me? You want Tom to jump over? I'm just kidding. That's an easy one, Tom. See, I'm not going to lie. Exactly. <laughs> uh, moving along from 